Welcome back to the Search Magic's Digital Summit. Uh, your host is still me, Malte, and I feel very honored to uh, announce the next speaker. Um, Aleda Solis has been one of my favorite speakers at SEO conferences for many, many years. Uh, when she won the award for European Search Personality of the Year in 2018, my only surprise was that she had not won it earlier. And uh, just to show you the impact Aleda has had on me, since the inception of YouTube, there's a total of three channels I have ever followed, uh, Epic Mealtime, FPS Russia, and Crawling Mondays. Um, and uh, one important thing uh, for this presentation, please minimize the slide view and maximize the screen sharing, because we had a small uh, formatting issue. And uh, now that I have raised expectations through the roof, uh, mm -hmm. over to you, Aleda. No pressure. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it, Malte. And, and yes, uh, thank you for following Crawling Mondays. You will see that actually today. I will use a little bit of my experience with Crawling Mondays to give the, this presentation insights, right? And um, today I want to talk in this session about optimizing for result search results using data to make better decisions about the implementation of images and video optimization in order to make them ROI positive in our SEO process, right? So why visual optimization in the first place, right? Realistically, I think that this is one of the most overlooked in general topics in SEO. I had the uh, great opportunity to interview the Google Webmaster team at the end of last year and I asked them what is that very important SEO trend that you think that people are overlooking that people are not talking enough about and they mentioned media search that includes both video and and, and images right I, I think that we have seen uh, Gary to speak a, a lot about image optimization and uh, and there's a lot of information already out there about it. And realistically, they sometimes this is more covered than others because it's the lowest low hanging fruit, I would say, the lowest hanging fruit for for our ourselves to implement. Realistically, sometimes and most of the times, whenever someone hears about image optimization or video optimization, the first reaction is like, it's even hard for me to get in the resources for text content. How will I get it from image or video, right? And the thing is that there's a huge opportunity, for example, for video. This is this impressive with YouTube because we need to think that when we do an action, an optimization action in video, it won't only have an impact or it won't only um, we'll be able to get a, a traffic presence and visibility from Google, but also if we do certain optimization steps, we'll be able to also get results from YouTube, right? Which is the second mass, I will say, use uh, search engine in the world, as you can see in, in this. It's a platform that has a huge visibility, not only on, on its own, but also from, from Google, so they highly interconnected. And we can see the data here is, is uh, well, not shockingly, I have to say, 19% of the desktop search results in the US include video carousels, and 92% of those come from YouTube, right? So it's not only that YouTube by itself has huge traffic and engagement and audience, but also it has a, a reflection and it has an interconnection with Google search results. Also, it's, it's critical to say how we can leverage many of this inclusion, video inclusions within the carousel, for example, not necessarily for very generic how-to type of videos, because a lot of people will come to me and say, you know, Aleda, this is great, but I am very focused on, on transactional queries and, and queries that will end up making me money. And there are two sides of this. We need to think that any research and conversion research and customer journey start with very top uh, top of, of, of the funnel type of queries, uh, queries that look to research about the functionality and compare the products. And for complex type of services and products, these searches in many occasions are better 
answer with videos, right? So it doesn't need to be very generic type of how to video. It can be very well integrated to show or explain about specific benefit of your of your offering, of your service or your product, a functionality that makes it unique or how to use it to better improve certain type of tasks or activities that will end up making an impact in the decision-making process of, of the customer, right? Additionally, videos can also help to position your brand and influence the customer journey on your side too. There's tons of research about this and, and case studies about this, as you can see, of how including embedding video in your landing pages, especially for complex products. Again, so for example, Asana does here an amazing job including video testimonials and how-tos in their feature pages that really better explain what they can do for businesses, how how they are able to fulfill many of the requests that their type of customers will have in their specific use cases that they will uh, very well target, right? And there is another point about this. Uh, in this particular case regarding image search, right, is that also in our mind, Many of us think, oh, image search, that is nice, but that won't bring traffic, right? Ultimately, you have the image tab that is completely disconnected with the one of the, the traditional organic search results. Realistically, if we search for many product-oriented queries, we will see that many of these products images are, are feature above the organic search results. So for example, if I search for something like Yeezy 250 sneakers, right? We, we see a row of these sneakers being featured in, in the, the Google search results directly. And if we click any of these images, it, the, it's literally two clicks away from getting this user customers or traffic to our website. So yes, you need to additionally click once again but realistically, this is also ultimately traffic that we can attract to our site, right? Also, it's important to think that images are also used along with the search, rich search results, such so as articles and recipes. So when we optimize for images, it's not only for image search results and that's it, it's to be able to also be correctly triggered and shown and featured across all the many search features. And finally, uh, images also have an impact in Google Discover. It's a fundamental aspect to configure uh, high quality images that have certain type of, of, uh, of format in order to be displayed and included there. We, that, and we know that Google Discover is a huge driver of traffic nowadays, for especially for informational type of websites. And there is something else also important to point out here that goes beyond SEO that ultimately has an impact in from a from a conversion perspective and therefore is very important for the marketing. People hardly buy anything without seeing it. And 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 literally if I want to check if a product is a good fit for me, if it is the right product to buy or no, the role of images in, in the conversion journey is critical. Ultimately, producing quality, especially visual content, video content, especially a lot of people say, oh my God, Aleda, it's super, it's super expensive, it's super complex. Uh, doesn't, it doesn't necessarily need to be like that. We, we can see how Wistia, for example, they share how you can build very high quality pro video station uh, with 500 or less euros. And even if you need at some point, if you don't have the technical resources, to edit the video or produce the video beyond taking the video itself, right? There's, there's uh, an additional process to, to, to cut it, to, to, to add the, the introduction, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right? All this production type of activities can be externalized with services that, as you can see below, they don't need to be hugely expensive also. So, it's about validating their impact in the decision-making process to prioritize accordingly and make the effort ROI positive too. Uh, so this is what I wanted to share with you today, how we can make sure that the process for us is ROI positive by taking into consideration data in our, in our decision-making uh, stages, right? So for the, uh, for the question, should I prioritize my image video search optimization effort? It will depend. It will depend if it is aligned with your content and SEO business goals. Uh, if this images and videos will have an impact in your targeted search results on channels, so that is 
why it is super critical to validate, if they will have an impact in non non-trivial search popularity topics too, if it is possible for you to develop and optimize uh, this images and videos following the guidelines that we are going to see now, right? So if the answers to all of this is yes, then of course, it, it, it's likely worth it for you and this should be prioritized in your process. If the answers for if any of this is no, then it's very likely that there are many more actions that will be, will, will bring uh, um, faster ROI in your SEO process, right? So let's see how to validate this through your existing SEO activities and process, right? In a very straightforward way with tools that you likely already have. So uh, a critical step here is to identify the relevant targeted non-trivial terms triggering image video, pre image video presence in, in Google, right? And this can be easily done by using the sort of features integrations in the keyword discovery um, section of functionality in, in search metrics, for example, whenever you're doing a keyword research, for example, headphones, you can go and select uh, to be shown which are those headphone related terms that are including a video carousel or uh, search results that have a, uh, a video snippet, right? So like this, you'll be able to see, oh, the, these are results that are already triggered uh, for this type of query. So you, you know that it's not that you will purely focus on this keyword because of this, but these are these are terms that are, of course, already relevant for your products or services. These are terms that you will want to highlight in order to target with images and videos. Also, check for which queries you're already ranking for, but not included in video image uh, results, right? Or, or, and these are the low-hanging low, low fruit for you because these are terms for which you're already ranking with, uh, some of your pages already, and and you're already there, right? But it's about then in this case, create and develop this, the content in these different formats to be included there and, and to optimize accordingly in order to be included there. So you need to add this as an extra uh, criteria because this will be the next next stage to say so, the next level of a priority, right? It's not only that these terms are already relevant for you very likely, and this is why you're already tracking them, but also that you're already in the top positions there, and it's a, it's a matter to to better, to, to create this, this content in these other formats and optimize it to be also additional included there and maximize your click rate for the search results query, right? Um, and then also an, another important question to ask is which are the targeted or show or shown competitors uh, in the search results because sometimes is uh, we are not yet included there but our competitors have and uh, once that we our competitors are doing it so we have two things here on one hand these are additional opportunities and gaps that we can close. And if we identify that these are queries that are also relevant for us and not only for our competitors, so it's win-win. Of course, we want to be there. Uh, and you see how they are already profiting from that. And then on the other hand, this, this is huge because there's a great uh, source of, of data to prove how your the other players in your sectors are making the most out of this opportunity, uh, great to build cases for the decision makers so you can get approval and resources to do it. So there, uh, from my experience, and this is a little bit sad too, but there's no way to get, no, there's no better way to get support sometimes in certain companies, especially, especially large ones, um, than saying your competitor, your top competitor, these other players are already profiting from it, and you are not. Right, um, and then what we can additionally do is to refine the topics to consider for videos using additional YouTube-related metrics with tools like VIQ, uh, for example. This tool will tell us which uh, is a level of, of competition that the search volume within YouTube in, in, from a search perspective. So we can only not only take into consideration our own uh, Google-oriented metrics, but also the the YouTube related ones and the competition levels and in YouTube too. So also take that into consideration to think is it is worthy or is not worthy for us. It will be hard or which should be the terms if you have to, to way too many, right? You need to prioritize which are the initial top five videos that you should start producing. So you know that this will be for those videos that will generate more search volume on, on one hand, but also the 
the search volume is not only popular in, uh, in Google, but also in YouTube. And in YouTube, the, the competition is not as high, for example. And this is something, there is something very important also to remember at this point, is that it should be not only targeting queries that are at the end of the day popular, but are also highly connected to your business offering, right? So for example, um, I started to test and, and dive into the video optimization world last year with my own YouTube channel. And then I quickly realized that, yes, to get a lot of subscribers and 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 and, um, and um, viewers in general and, and views for, for my videos, uh, targeting videos like with topics like how to do SEOs or uh, SEO for WordPress, very generic, right? They or for or about very basic type of topics, right? Will bring me many more type of, of, uh, of visitors, viewers in this case. Uh, um, reproductions in this case of uh, realistically, these are terms that are not necessarily highly connected with the type of service that I provide as an SEO or, or how I focus in, in, in SEO, right? I am much more targeted to terms that have to do with uh, technical SEO, international SEO, strategical SEO. So for me, a term like progressive web app SEO is much more relevant and connected. And even if the search popularity volume won't be as high, it will still bring a little bit. Uh, so it's about, as we do in the, the, the QR research process and validation in our own SEO process for any other type of content, it's here to verify and balance it out. It is a, a popular search search uh, query, but it's also highly connected to my own products and services, and it will be meaningful to run for it, right? And another important factor here, again, is to verify for which of this we already have content that's relevant to be optimized with images or repurposed into a video, right? Because it will be, this will, will, this will do the, 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 the process much more easily, right? It will highly facilitate the process because we have already the information. It's about reformatting the information to be gener to generate a video or to, uh, to produce an image or to look for an image that connects with the, with, the, with the content. And we can then embed and insert the content in a page that is already ranking and in most cases, right? So the, you can see here all of the criteria that I will tend to go through in order to identify those those relevant and competitive but popular queries topics to address and videos and images in general. So once that we have found this, uh, this word key queries to target, uh, the next step is how to optimize them, right? And I have to say that there are already a lot of content and information and useful and wonderful resources regarding image optimization. Um, and I have to say that it's also much more straightforward than with the video optimization process. So it's about making the, the file crawlable, com com highly compressed, low weight, a uh, fast uh, a file that is responsive that you include a descriptive title and caption descriptive file name relevant sound uh, surrounding text uh, structured data image xml sign map uh, included descriptive all the uh, alt text to high quality image so uh, there is a to-do list here there's a checklist and i have to say that google here as you can see in 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 the the link at the bottom has this very well covered in the wrong guidelines. Um, as you can see here, this is fantastic. It's a fantastic resource, resource that Google share with us uh, and has been updated in the last months too. Also, you can look at this, this wonderful e-commerce guide for image optimization too, where he listed and, and, and aggregated and specified like this, right? For every rich result uh, that include an images, what you specifically need to do and the specifications of the image uh, in each particular case. So I will not focus on images that much as because we can see that already wonderful resources out there. And it's very straightforward to process to follow with the already existing uh, more strategic type of information that we I, I mentioned before, right? But realistically, this is not what happens with views, right? That has a, also an added search layer of, of uh, complexity with YouTube. So let's focus on, on let's let's focus on, on video here because it's the one that yeah, it's less cover, a little bit more complex to go through, and also will require a little bit of more effort to produce too. So here is critical to keep in mind: the goal should be to produce videos to leverage both YouTube and Google search results like this and, and YouTube video and YouTube rankings, YouTube, uh, YouTube video and Google search results embedded 
page video in Google search results, right? So, as, as, and it's critical to think that YouTube is an independent platform. Uh, it also has ranking factors, but it's funny that most of this and the way to bring traffic and views and subscribers to your videos will be generated and driven by YouTube's recommendation algorithm, right? Most of the 1 billion hours of videos on YouTube are, are generated by the recommendations uh, that you, the YouTube algorithm works with, right? It's, it's 70% of that, to be specific, right? So the YouTube algorithm has two roles. The first one is to help each viewer to find the videos they want to watch. And the second one is to get the, view, the viewers to keep watching more of what they like, to keep the users engaged. So YouTube will follow the audience behavior, what users watch and don't watch, what users like and dislike, how much time users spend watching the videos, that not interested feedback to. So these principles are used through the different YouTube discovery channels, internal and external too. Not only for the the search feature in YouTube, but also for suggested videos, at home videos, notifications, trending, etc. Right. So suggested videos are ranked to maximize engagement based on prior user activity. For example, YouTube Home shows videos for subscriptions or, or videos watched by similar viewers or new videos. YouTube search ranks the most relevant and highly engaged videos to the query, taking into consideration the title relevance, the description relevance, the watch time of a video for query, for example. So here in YouTube, um, it's a little bit different than in Google. In Google, we think about the relevance of the content, the popularity of the content, the accessibility, crawlability of, of, of the content, the indexability of the content. However, in this case, in YouTube, it's about the relevance of the video given by title description, the engagement that the video has given by likes, views, rating, comments, shares, subscriptions, and the retention of that video, right? And this is critical that we take into consideration when we establish a video production and optimization plan like this. We should think that if one, we want to produce, for example, a video every week like this at the beginning of the week, then we have things to do on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the rest of the week, right? To publish the video, to promote the video, to repurpose the video uh, within the content, to embed it, to reply to the comments, to retweet, to reserve. Remember that about the engagement part uh, that we want to incentivize with our users. So it's important to ask for feedback, to engage with the community, etc., and then to record again the next video for the next week, for example. Uh, so it's critical here that we identify the videos with more views engagement about the topics that we want to cover, for example, using tools like Zoom, to, to, so we can prioritize further. Check uh, which are the top ranked videos and channels for your targeted queries and how they're optimizing YouTube. What we want to identify here is that for those topics that we have already identified that we want to cover with videos, we, we can find out how the top ranked videos are already doing it, so how they are optimizing for for these videos, how they are include the keywords in the key areas that we're going to see. And I have to say that, the, again, the VidaQ tool is very, very handy because it can be installed as, as a Chrome extension, so it will overlay web data in the top videos that are shown for any query, as you can, as you can see here in, in, in the screen. So it will show us the top terms for which all of these videos are already optimizing for us and their top metrics. So we can take that also into consideration when we start our own optimization process, right? So we can optimize your, uh, we, we can optimize our channel in YouTube using the identified patterns as a reference, right? I include those terms that are in general our, our channel will cover. And then for each specific video, whenever that, when we upload the video, we'll need to make sure to make the most out of each element of the content to make it relevant towards the target queries. Then in this case, styles, descriptions, and tags are, are key, right? And, and we see how, again, using using tools like VidAQ and then TubeBody too, uh, it would overlay and suggest terms that we can use that will that are connected and relevant for the video already. Um, and, and, and literally, I love that YouTube makes the addition of this and optimization of this very, very handy because it already shows, for example, which elements are required, uh, what is the maximum length of titles, descriptions, and, and, and tags, for example, wh how many you can add in general. So it, it makes the process very straightforward. And the thing is, the, this process 
can be a little bit intensive, right? It might require a little bit of a effort. So title, description, hashtag tags, cool caption, which of this have actually a, an influence, right? This is a very important question to ask. In which of this you actually need to put much more effort? And based on the, the, the tests that I did, uh, the ones that were highly correlated with those triggering the keywords for which they were optimized for were the title, description, and hashtags, right? That doesn't mean that you don't need to or you shouldn't add, for example, closed captions uh, or tags. Tags are, are used, uh, especially at the beginning, for you to, to identify the topic of, of, a, of a video, for example, and and then, uh, for example, post captions are amazing to to allow the users to watch the video uh, in, when the video is muted or in silence. So when the person might be, for example, commuting, um, and and then also, of course, for 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 big people and, and users that have accessibility issues, right, and and challenges. So, so it is critical to. And then, on the other hand, we should be aware of an additional opportunity is that Google has also started to show timestamps in the ranked videos in search result from YouTube, right? So this is fantastic because uh, we don't necessarily need to do much more. We just need to make sure that in our description, we add, add labels with timestamps of each topic that we cover in the video. Uh, like this, like I am showing in the screen, like very straightforward in the already existing description of the video in, in YouTube like this. And uh, this will then be, as you can see here, uh, obtained by Google and will be shown in the mobile search results when the video is featured in the carousel. So the first step should, should be about getting that video included in the carousel once it's, it's included. And the, the, it, it, it will be shown like this if we have taken the, the additional step of including the labels and timestamps as, as I'm showing on screen. So this is amazing. This is a win-win because it additionally improves the click to rate very likely. It, it shows and features a video much more prominently in mobile search results. And then when, once that we have done this process, it's important to additional verify, double check, always double check. Take a look at how the top rank videos for your queries are optimized and improved further. This is critical. I do it first, I, I optimize, I publish it. And then once I publish again, I see which are the two videos, if I am not there, uh, or if I am there, which are the ones that are, are ranking me still, which are the ones that I should take into consideration to optimize further. And then once we have optimized for relevance, how we make our video highly, to be highly engaged and retain users with it, right? To grow our subscriber even further, to be able to be recommended by the Google recommendation engine. So let's start optimizing our thumbnails, which are, are the ads of our videos. Uh, so we should design them to make them unique, attractive, with a representative image, including a catchy title. Re re replace the default thumbnail of the video with our original image using a, a thumbnail generator. For example, there is this Canva, the thumbnail generator that is completely free that you can use to generate catchy and, and very look, good looking uh, thumbnails. And then you can also run an A-B test of your video thumbnail and, and to test the metadata with the tools, tools like the body to identify your audience preferences and go to uh, the point when you start with your new video. This is super important to incentivize engagement and to keep your users watching, right? And I didn't realize it, this at the beginning. So when I started recording my videos, I had this intro song at the beginning of the video. Uh, so we need to make we need to be aware that user won't stay for many seconds watching the videos if you already don't start bringing something or offering something that is that is interesting enough to engage the user to keep watching, right? So users' one way to decide if they want to keep watching is important to start right away with an actual information in your intro. This is critical. And then if you want to have a little bit of an intro, you can have it or you can feature it after you have started with your word or, or speech initial speech of the video, right? Or explanatory intro of, of the video, right? And then you can add relevant hashtag in descriptions as, as they will be featured and highlighted above the title, within the title too. So what you, you can do is to include the hashtags and as I am showing here on screen, 
in your description. And this hashtag that you include at the bottom of your description will be then highlighted at the top of the titles. And, uh, and or if you can also include hashtags even in, in your own titles, right? And what you will get with this is that these are actual clickable links that if you click on them, you will get the search results of, of that specific search that should be ideally highly connected with your with your video. And then it's a bet also optimizing the user experience with your channel to create playlists to facilitate users to browse through your channel videos using their topics, use your YouTube channel home to promote your latest videos or those that will generate the highest number of subscribers, including for cards in your videos to to link to other relevant ones or create a poll to engage users, for example, add end screens to your videos using the YouTube Studio feature to refer your users to, to more of them and subscribe to the channel too. I love uh, that there is an option that will allow you to include the video that is the best one for the user or viewer, depending completely relying on, on, on the YouTube recommendation engine that I, I I have to say that is very, very accurate and good in this. And it's about not being shy. Ask your users to engage, right? To keep watching the, to, to get answers, to leave comments with questions, to subscribe to the channel, to like the video. It's a little bit of being a community manager here rather than, than an SEO or, or, or an optimizer, right? Uh, add call to action with links to watch more of your videos in, in the description and and um, and also pin the a comment that the first one to comment if you go to all of these youtubers videos you will see that the pin the first one to comment in their own videos is themselves um asking or sending a message to the user and asking the, the users to like the video if they actually have liked it, if they have found it useful or, or nice or interesting, and, and then engaging the, 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 the users to to continue interacting, to to ask more more information, etc. And if you see that the the also other type of of, um, of great engagements or or replies that you have gotten. You can also at some point afterwards also pin those comments that will get even higher, uh, a higher engagement that is not necessarily yours, but at the beginning, of course, you can start with yours at the end. So there is an, also another trend that I think that if what you're also looking to is to develop your authority in your field and get more numbers of, of um, subscribers in general is that you can pick it back on training topics that people are actively searching for in your sector. So for example, uh, what to do after Google Feature Snippets update. I, I uploaded a video right after this happened. I also uploaded a, a video when uh, the coronavirus situation started to happen, covering and, and talking about different options of what to do uh, in regards to SEOs. And of course, th this, this video is had more had a higher than normal type of engagement and 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 uh and views in general because it's a very hot topic these were very hot topics um about it and 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 then it's important to realize that you want to promote your youtube video while the video is new since youtube gives a freshness boost this is this is critical and after so after a, a, a while passes you will say okay um I don't only want to bring the, the, the user to, to YouTube, but I want to also leverage this video into my own website, right? So for example, if this video is about a how-to, you like to have a how-to section on, on your site, or if it's about information uh, about an, that you already had covered in an article on your blog, you may also want to go to the blog existing page to embed the video there. And if, if, if not, then you should definitely create a blog section or how to section or FAQ section uh, on, on your website where you can embed the video directly. Or if, if it is about a product or a service that you already provide, definitely leverage that existing, existing um, products or service page that will connect with the information that the video is covering. And you can embed your YouTube video in the post uh, initially to also help promote it, the, the YouTube channel, the YouTube video to get, you, to get more views and more engagement directly. And you can include a transcription including com complementary information and resources, of course. If you already have an article content for the video, you can embed it there to enrich the existing ranking page, of course. It, you can include an uh, RL equals zero parameter to show whether the video is only from your channel and not your competitors. And you can link to your channel with a sub 
confirmation parameter to go directly to the subscription option whenever you are saying uh, tell to the user okay you can go to my channel directly and you can subscribe you can add this parameter there so you, the, the user will be shown and be, will be triggered with this option to subscribe directly you can include a watermark to your entire videos allowing users to easily subscribe uh, you can generate the transcription with automated speech uh, to tech services, which are also very, very cheap. And after the freshness period passes by, they want to switch the YouTube embed for a Wistia one. Why? Because with Wistia, you can include directly structured data, the video object structured data for the videos directly on, on the page. Uh, like this, you have high, also higher chances to rank for your targeted queries in Google search. So with, long, with your own page, directly instead of relying only on, on YouTube and, and you will be able to keep or bring the traffic to your own site, right? And if you think that this is a lot of work, it's not if you have validated work first that these are working to target queries realistically. So let's see the results. You can run for those not yet so competitive with highly relevant terms within YouTube like this. You can see that run rangers allow you to track uh, the specific rankings within YouTube search results like this. Like this, for example, here's an example of, of, of uh, Google of Data Analysis ranking in the first position like this in, in, in YouTube with a, with a new video. Then you can also rank as well in Google search results with your YouTube videos and embedded videos in blog posts too. Uh, again, Rank Ranger doesn't only allow us to um, see the YouTube rankings, but also those rankings specifically in, within the video carousel and will tell us also the specific position within the carousel and the evolution over time and which other other players are also included al along ourselves in, within the carousel. And the, the, the result will be this one, as you are seeing on the screen, be included in the video carousel, especially in mobile search results, can mean yeah, very highly well visible type of of, of inclusion. We can also rank also twice with the same video within the carousel with one with the YouTube video and the other with the embedded Wistia one in the post, right? So Google somehow, they haven't identified, they haven't sorted out to, to know when it is the same content, but with different type of, of files uh, embedded in different, uh, from or from the different platforms embedded in different sites, right? So you can see how I'm ranking twice with the same videos in the same carousel for the same query, right? Or you can, of course, rank with a video highlighted with a key moment in mobile search results like this, which will bring even further type of future rate and opportunity. So the thing is to identify the characteristics of videos that generate better rankings, more views, engagement, subscribers, to identify what works best or not with your audience. At the beginning, you will need to try it out with, with, with a many diverse type of topics that uh, will, will who have been identified at the beginning of the process I mentioned, but then you want to, of course, optimize further uh, based on the results that you get. And it's important also to remind ourselves that depending on the sector that you have, that you are at, and the type of videos that you, that you publish, it shouldn't be about the raw numbers. It's about your end goal, having an impact with your actual relevant audience through the customer journey. Like for example, Trello is having here by being included whenever someone searches for productivity type of, type of topics. It's the videos, the ones that are shown, which is highly relevant for them because they are they are a task manager and this is one of their main use cases, right? So it's about making it working by using data in the decision making and optimization process. As you can see, and if you do it like this, it will be a profitable ROI positive type of activity within your SEO, already existing SEO efforts. Thank you very much. I hope that this has been useful for you. And uh, well, very looking forward in the future to continue sharing more about this. And if you have any questions also, you can ask me over Twitter where I am very active too. Uh, I am at Aleida there. Thank you very much. Thanks, Aleida. This was super interesting. Um, can you end the screen share so that people will see our videos properly? Yeah, because sure I, I do have some follow-up questions. But first of all, I have to say, I especially like the this decision-making ma flow for like, should I invest in rich media or not? Uh, super helpful. And um, what a basic but really great idea that I completely missed to always pin your own comment on top on YouTube and then using that for extra links. So definitely something that I will, I will take into account in the future. Um, now, one topic, and you, you scratched the surface there already, I think, is 
YouTube versus self-hosting videos on, on like your own website. What would you say is the, the, the decision-making framework there for a company who needs to decide between do I do my own video hosting or do I start yeah. a YouTube channel? Yes, so I would say, um, and of course, I, I hate to give like rule of thumbs, right? Because again, there, may, there might be many edge cases and scenarios, but in general, if it is a, an informative how-to type of, uh, of, of information, it should be very straightforward. Uh, you should definitely leverage uh, YouTube, right? Because this is, in many occasions, th those cases where there are many more carousels included, right? And you def and, and uh, realistically, it's, it's sad, but more than 80-something percent of, of, of the videos included there are from YouTube, right? So if you want to maximize your chances to be included in the carousels in Google, uh, it really helps to, to, to host your video in YouTube, right? On the other hand, I understand how if you're producing videos for your products, right? And you have a product page that is very highly, uh, let's say, professional and, and, and you don't want to lose the user, uh, the user to go to uh, uh, YouTube and you want to keep the user on the product page to engage more the user and convert the user at the end of the day. If for those type of cases, you may want to do two things. You may have the product video on YouTube hosted to get any type of uh, internal search visibility from, from YouTube search results itself. But the one that you're using in your own product page is the one of Wistia, right? That uh, for the paid um, pro type of, 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 um, of package that they have, they will allow you to eliminate any any of the branding to configure completely the the um, the, 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 the the playing options, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right. So you can have a very highly well formatted and optimized uh, video for your product, knowing that the user won't leave. It won't distract the user in a in a bad way from from the actual goal that is to buy the the product. Right. So I think that by by you know splitting it like this, when your pro product is transactional oriented or you want to embed the video in a transactional oriented page it should be okay and you can maximize and make the most out of the two words right yeah i agree um now let's uh, imagine i have um, a great successful video on youtube um should i just take it and upload the same video to facebook instagram tv linkedin and tiktok to maximize my reach or what would your be your strategy there for for content repurposing so this is a thing, right? Um, and thank you very much for the question, because remember that in, in YouTube, remember how I, I mentioned that we wanted to maximize engagement, right? Uh, you wanted to generate more subscribers. So you, want, you ask the, the user to wait uh, at, and at the beginning uh, to see more information at the end or to subscribe to the channel, etc. So of course, maybe you, you don't want to upload that video exactly like that to Facebook, because in Facebook, might not have the same sense, right? Or in Facebook, you want to format in another way to engage the user or refer the user to the Facebook specific type of areas, for example, or to make an ad for the Facebook ads, for example, you, it's, it's, it's not reasonable to have a, a video of the same length, so you want to short it, uh, to, uh, just to use a specific area uh, of, of, the, of the video for, for, for a specific, uh, ad, for example, or topic or posing in Facebook. So I will say it, it would be ideal when you are producing the video to think if you are going also to use the video in different platforms besides YouTube and Google, right? Because I'm talking about search. I focus on the two that are search oriented. But if you want to also leverage the video for social channels, for other type of purposes and channels that you may want to, when you do the addition, you want to generate additional editions of the videos, focus on those of the channels. So these are, these might, might be even shorter videos or more like splits of those videos. Yeah, you don't need to record again and again and again. You don't want to do 10 videos with 10 different recordings. You just need to record once. And then when you are editing the video to generate many variations of those. Yeah, totally makes sense. One final question. Um, the future of online video formats, is it going to be the, the, land, the, the portrait mode or the landscape mode? Oh, my God, that, that, that is a really good question. You know what? It's funny that you mention it because many years ago, before 
uh, filming in from from your smartphone became be, became trendy, right? Um, I tend to film a lot uh, at some point. I don't know. I have always liked video, and I film it like vertically, right? And and I remember being highly well, criticize because of this, I, like proper video people, right? Like telling me, oh, later, like, why do you, why do you, you end up filming like that? Do it horizontally, please, etc. I have to say, at this point, again, it depends. It, if, if it is um, professional looking, product oriented uh, in a channel like, again, YouTube and, and, and your own website, you will expect to see something that is of course has a proper dimension that is horizontal uh more professional looking and produced if this is content that is more informational that is more uh oriented to your community to engage with the community like social type of content i don't think that at this point it is frowned upon right that is vertical especially if it, it lived, if it is if it, if it lives in a social network right so i have to say that for the professional looking or the professional oriented or product oriented videos, I really think that the standards will be kept. However, for any other content that is known and understood that will be especially distributed through a social channel and not only search, I, and it's informational oriented, I, I will say that vertically uh, formatted uh, videos will be more than okay and sh are already i think that at this point these are already the, the fact the standard right and the, people they don't they don't criticize this just because right yeah i think we're at a tipping point like something interesting i noticed in younger influencers they mm -hmm. buy two iphones 11 type, yeah. ta tape them together like this and film yeah. on both so that they have both the vertical and the horizontal version of the video for their YouTube and for their for their TikTok. Uh, but I think we are at a tipping point where at some point we will we will all start only filming like this. Um, thanks for the great Thank presentation. You. Thanks for the really great answers. Um, and uh, thanks to the audience for listening. And then uh, see everybody soon with the next video of the Search Metrics Digital Summit. Uh, Bye-bye from my uh, cozy little home office here in Berlin. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.